Elaine here, countryhomeandheart.net is my website and today we're going to be making a fresh apple and black walnut cake. Um, this is an absolutely wonderful cake especially for this time of year because this is September and the fresh apples are going to be in abundance. We're going to have all kinds of varieties and it's going to be the apples are going to be really good this time of year so which is what made me kind of inspired me to show you uh, start showing you some apple recipes for the fall now this particular recipe was one that um, I had in a cookbook and I was trying to make an, a fresh apple cake and the recipe called for pecans well I didn't have any I didn't even have any walnuts but I did have some black walnuts and I thought well that, those are good in carrot cake. I bet that would be good in uh, the apple cake as well. So I went ahead and added those and I thought just to help it along a little bit I would add some black walnut flavoring and the result was just phenomenal. It was the best cake I ever made and I've made it that way ever since. So we're going to go ahead and get this started. Now um, I have my oven preheat heating to um, 350 degrees and it sounds like, yeah, I just got there a minute ago. And I have coated my tube pan with wax paper and I coated that with, uh, with uh, shortening and then I floured that as well. Just We don't want this to stick. So I'm going to set this aside. Now I have another video where I showed how, how, how to line that kind of pan with parchment paper or with uh, waxed paper and I will put a link to that video down below. Now um, and also I just want to remind you if you enjoy my videos and you find them helpful um, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel so that you can uh, get more videos as I do these. Okay so we're going to go ahead and get this started. And I'm going to turn you down so you can see my mixing bowl. Okay. And I'm going to add, I'm going to start out with one and a half cups of, this is canola oil. You can use vegetable oil or corn oil or whatever kind of oil you've got, um, as long as it's not a strong flavored one. So I'm using canola oil because that's what I have. Okay, and to that, I'm going to add two cups of sugar. You just dump it right on in. And then to that, I'm going to add, this is three large eggs, and just dump those in. We don't have to worry about, with this recipe, you don't have to worry about adding those one at a time. You can add those all together. And then we're going to add our flavoring. So I have one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract that I'm going to be adding. Just like that. Okay. And then I'm going to add one teaspoon of black walnut flavoring. And you can order um, the black walnut flavoring online if you can't find it in the grocery store because it can be hard to find. Um, I ordered mine from Amazon.com and I have a link um, on my website on, under Great Products, under the Great Products page. Um, there is a link to actually order the black walnut flavoring there if, uh, if you can't find it in your store. Okay, well now we have to beat this until it's light and fluffy, and so I'm going to do that off camera, and I will be back. Okay, I'm back, and I have finished beating this, and you can see that it is pretty light and fluffy. So, it doesn't fluff up like, for instance, um, it would if you were making cookies, but um, this is just about right on this batter. So, I'm going to go ahead and take my beater out move it over here and I'm going to move my pan and let me move you so you can see what I'm doing there we go okay right in there and you should be able to see that pretty well okay so here is the 
there is the this is the oil and the sugar and the eggs and the flavorings all mixed together and now we're ready to start uh, the dry ingredients so here I have my flour this is three cups of flour that I have sifted and measured we sift first and then measure and that way it ensures an accurate uh, measurement so at this point to this flour I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt just pour that right in with the flour and one teaspoon of baking soda now this time this is baking soda and not baking powder baking soda we're going to add one teaspoon of baking soda this recipe doesn't use baking powder um, it, it's always used baking soda and it works this is a really good recipe so okay and then i'm going to add to that one teaspoon mine's a heaping teaspoon because we do like cinnamon pretty well so i'm adding uh, one heaping teaspoon of cinnamon if you don't like that as much cinnamon you can back that down if you like or if you like more you can even add a little more to it okay and i'm just going to take a fork and i'm going to mix this together just like that Okay, and I am going to start adding this to my oil mixture, just a little at a time. And when, at this part, we want to stir this with a spatula. Now, when you're beating your dry, your wet ingredients, your liquid ingredients, you can beat that pretty much as long as you want to, and it's not going to hurt a thing. But once you start adding your dry ingredients, you do not want to overmix because overmixing will make the cake very dry. Sometimes it'll it'll make it tough. It'll make it crumbly. Um, you just won't get a good texture if you overmix. So we're going to be very careful just to add this flour a little bit at a time and just use my spatula and start mixing this together. Now we want to do it a little at a time and that because this will, this is going to get pretty thick and pretty hard to stir and so if you added that all at once it would be a lot more difficult. So we're just going to add that a little at a time. This is probably one of my most requested cakes. Um, I had a good friend of mine that was getting married and she requested uh, this cake for her, her bridal shower. Um, so I had I made a nice cake for for that um, at all my church dinners that I used to that we used to go to I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of that now um, this was always the one that people wanted me to make it's it's really that good okay and usually I was never lucky enough to bring even a crumb of it home so <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and get this mixed up and like I say, this is a great cake for the fall because it is, um, because now's the time when you're getting all your fresh apples and all kinds of different varieties. And this cake, this works well with um, a tart apple like a Granny Smith or that kind of thing. Now today I'm using Honeycrisp and it works really well with Honeycrisp apples too. So, oh, what is that? That looks like a piece of looks like a piece of uh, baking soda that didn't get incorporated definitely don't want that in there you want to get that incorporated now you see how thick this is that's what I was saying it does get thick so don't let that alarm you um, it will thin back out when we add our apples and our and our um, nuts back into this so okay and I've just about got it I just want to make sure I have all the flour and everything incorporated and we don't have because you wouldn't want anyone to hit one of those nasty little lumps like I just showed you we had <laughs> okay all right 
And I think at this point we are ready to stir in our apples. This is two cups of, and like I said, this is Honeycrisp. And you see they're coarsely chopped. I, I chopped these just very coarse. You want to, you want to nice big chunks, so I chop, chop these pretty coarse. Okay, and I'm just going to dump those right in. And actually, that was a little more than two cups. That was about two and a half, maybe even close to three cups. And that's all right. That's not going to hurt a thing. So, get that little peel out of there. I don't know how that got in there. Okay. And you can see now the batter is beginning to thin out a little bit now that I got the stirring in the apples. And I just fold that in from the bottom and bring that up. And it is still a pretty thick batter. This is pretty dense. But it won't be once it is baked. This is going to be a very moist cake. Um, okay, and let's add the last ingredient we're putting in those black walnuts. And we're just going to stir those in. Just kind of fold those nuts right in. Alright, we're just about there. like we got it. So I'm going to rinse my fingers off. And we're going to go ahead and spread this batter into our bundt pan. So let me just start this on the spatula. Okay, let me lay that right there. Okay, and I'm going to start spooning my batter into the pan. And once I get this spooned in, we're going to spread this around. And you can see how thick this batter is, so don't worry about that. If you, if you make this cake and your batter is thick, that's exactly like it should be for this kind of cake. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to glaze this. It doesn't really need any frosting. It is a very moist and rich cake. But um, what I think I'm going to do um, is make a caramel glaze to put on this cake. And we'll do that in a little while. And I will sh I'll come back and show you how to do the caramel glaze. I always start with clean hands because this is a job that I have tried to be nice and use a spoon or a spatula to scrape these out. It just doesn't work like my hands do. So I like to do that with my hands. Okay. Now we're almost done. I'm just going to take a spatula and get the rest of this out. You want to get every bit of this batter. It's really delicious, so it makes a wonderful cake. So you want to make sure that you get all of that batter. And I have, so and now I'm just going to kind of spread it out. Just like you would spread brownie dough, a brownie batter. Okay. my hand. Okay, and I'm going to turn you up here so I can talk to you. There we go. 
All right, now we're going to bake this in a 350 degree oven for about an hour and 20 minutes. Now it may not take that long, it depends on your oven. In my oven it tends to be pretty hot so it probably is not going to take an hour and 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start checking this in 10 minutes. I mean, I'm sorry, in one hour. And uh, as soon as I can insert a knife or a toothpick and it come out clean, then it's done. And so uh, that's when we'll take it up. So we're going to start checking this. I'm going to put it in the oven and start checking it in about an hour. And we'll be back when this gets done and I'm ready to take it out of the pan. Okay, I'm back and my cake has been baking about one hour. The timer just went off and I'm getting ready to check it and we'll see where we're at right now and how much uh, more we're going to have to do. So um, let me turn you down so you can see. Okay, I think you can see that. Ooh, my glasses fogged up a little bit there. Okay, so we're going to check on the cake. Alright, and here's what we have. Okay, I'm going to turn this up a little bit because I want you to be able to see it. Move that over. Okay, so there it is. Now this feels springy, but we're going to check it with the toothpick because I want to make sure that this is done. It may have to go a little bit longer, so I'm just going to stick that toothpick right in there. And you know what? Can you see that? It has come out clean. Okay, there's nothing on there. So, I think our cake is done. So, okay, in my oven, it took just about one hour. So... So we're going to go ahead and turn, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my oven and move my cake over here to cool. Let me turn you around. Actually, let's do this. Okay. All right, now there's my little rack. And I'm just going to take this cake and let it cool right there on my rack for just about 10 minutes and I will be back and we'll take it out of the pan. Alright, be back in a minute. Okay, I'm back and our cake has been cooling in the pan for about 10 minutes so let's go ahead and get it out. Okay, and I'm going to turn you down so you can see. Alright, and so, ooh, still a little hot so let me get a hold of the pan. I'm going to use some pot holders here. Okay, and I'm just going to tip this up like so, and bring it over. Okay, we got it. <laughs> it didn't break. Okay, that happens sometimes when you go to, when you're trying to work fast, and these pot holders are always clumsy. So, I try not to use them if I don't have to. Okay, so let's take off our our wax paper. Okay, and there's one. I'm going to remove this one. Alright, and there is our cake. So, and it looks really good. It didn't, it uh, feels good and soft and springy. I think it's going to be a good moist cake. Alright, so let me take this and throw this away. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my lid, this is an airtight lid, and I'm going to put this airtight lid down on this cake. And we're going to move it out of the way. Okay. And I'm just going to let it kind of sit there and do its own thing and cool, cool down a little bit in that. Now what that will do, that's going to form water droplets on the inside of that. And what that will do is that will reabsorb back into the cake as it cools. And it will help help the cake keep help the cake keep its moistness so while we're doing that it's time to go ahead and make this caramel glaze so I'm going to move you to the stove and we'll start the caramel glaze be back in just a minute okay I'm back and we're at the stove and I'm going to do my caramel glaze so let me turn you down so you can see 
bring that a little closer. There, that looks pretty good right there. A little bit more, there we go. Okay. So what I have in my, this is a heavy saucepan that I'm using. This is actually a Gordon Ramsay, a uh, piece of Gordon Ramsay cookware, um, which the newer cookware he's got has a, like a Teflon coating or something on there, and I don't like that. This is stainless steel, and it works very well. So we're going to go ahead and turn our burner on and get this started. So get that little piece of paper out of there. <laughs> Had a little piece of paper from the butter in there. So we're going to get that out. Okay. And we're going to melt this butter. And just get this going here. Now, while I'm waiting for this butter to melt, what, I, what we're going to do is we're going to have just a little bit of this cake tomorrow. And then what I will do the rest of it is I will individually wrap the slices and freeze them and that way whenever someone wants a piece of cake why they can just get a little cake out of the freezer and you can microwave it for about 30 seconds or so and it comes out just like you just baked it um, so this cake does freeze very well so that's what we're gonna do and freezing is one good way to help keep help kinda keep me in check so I don't overindulge <laughs> on this cake and this one is a good one to overindulge with because it is very good um, so we're gonna um, go ahead and freeze that later on um, tomorrow probably or the or the next day and, uh, okay and this caramel glaze just sets it off really well and what I'm going to do is, before I put on the glaze, I want the cake to be almost cool, just slightly warm. Because what happens is if you put the, if you put the hot glaze on a hot cake, what tends to happen is with this kind of glaze, it just kind of soaks up into the cake and it doesn't really glaze it, it just kind of soaks into it, which is alright, makes it good and moist. But I would rather have it on top of the cake a little bit thicker. So, all right, and our butter is melted. I'm going to turn my heat down. I had my heat up on uh, on high so that it would uh, so that it would get that butter started melting. I want that down a little bit now. So I've turned it down to medium high. And now to this, I'm going to add one half cup of firmly packed brown sugar. And we're just going to stir that in. Okay, and I want to add a dash of salt, just a little bit. We don't need much. Okay, and I'm going to move this off the heat for just a moment because why I want to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And also, I'm going to add one, tea, one half teaspoon of caramel extract. So we're just going to pour that right in, and that'll help really enhance that caramel taste. All right, and I'm going to move this back over to the heat, and I think what I'm going to do is switch off to my whisk. And we're going to start whisking this. And we want to uh, kind of scrape that down off the sides of the pan as well. Okay, and we're just going to cook this until that sugar has dissolved. Now I'll show you a little trick that I like to do. I like to take corn syrup, and it's going to be about two tablespoons. So let's just squeeze that right in. And that's about right, right there. That's about two tablespoons. And we're going to mix that in with it. And what that will do, I'm going to go just a little bit more because I don't know if that was quite two tablespoons. I want at least that. Okay, that's a little better. Okay, and what this will do is it helps keep the sugar crystals from forming. Which will, when you have sugar crystals, it will make, it tends to make your glazes or your toppings kind of grainy and we don't want that. Okay and the last ingredient I'm going to add is two teaspoons of milk. 
So we're just going to dump that in. Okay, and we're going to let this cook on medium heat and stirring constantly until it starts to thicken. And it has been to a boil here, but we want to get this to start thickening a little more to reduce a little bit before we that and I want to make sure all my sugar is dissolved because we don't want any kind of crystalline um, to in this uh, topping or in this glaze. I don't want it to have any crystals in it. I want it to be nice and smooth. Okay, and that's what the corn syrup will help with too, but okay, and so I'm gonna just kind of turn let me kind of use the spatula here and make sure I don't have any sugar crystals up on the side of the pot. I want to make sure I have all that incorporated in there. Okay, and you can see it is starting to thicken a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but that's beginning to thicken. It has, it's got a very caramely, buttery smell to it. That it just smells between that and that cake. This house actually smells amazing right now. <laughs> so I wish y'all could come over and have a piece of this cake with me. I'd love that. Love to meet y'all. Okay, and I think that this. It's just about here. So what we're going to do is take this off of the heat and let this cool. And when this cools down, we're going to let it cool for maybe 10 minutes or so. And once that cools down and really starts to get thick, I'm going to take my whisk and just whisk it a little bit again. And we're going to put it over that cake. Okay, so I'll be back when we're ready to put that over the cake. Okay, I'm back, and our, uh, I believe that our uh, glaze is ready to put on the cake. I'm going to turn you down here so you can see it. You see how what a nice texture that is, and it um, absolutely will not be grainy even after it sits on that cake. It's going to be very, very smooth, um, almost like melted caramels, <laughs> caramel candies. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to turn you this way and let's bring our cake down so you can see. Okay, and there is our cake. Let's turn this a little bit. Okay, there you go. That looks pretty good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start kind of spooning this over top of my cake and pushing it towards the edges. Keep pouring this right towards those edges. And you see what a nice, nice glaze this turned out. Okay, and we're just going to go right towards the edges and keep pouring this on. I missed that. Put that right in the hole. But that's okay. We'll still eat it. <laughs> okay. And there we have it. There is our apple, our fresh apple and black walnut cake with caramel glaze. And that is going to make a very nice dessert. For tomorrow, and I think my husband's going to enjoy this. He really he likes this cake too. So now he is gone. Um, right now he's not home. He took took his um, 93 year old mother out to do a few errands. But maybe when he comes back, I'll show him this cake, and if he wants a piece of it, we will cut it, and I'll let you see us try it. So okay, so hopefully we'll be back in a little while. Okay, I'm back, and it doesn't look like my husband's going to get back anytime soon, but I did want to at least show you this cake, and so you can see how moist it is. So let me turn you down, and there it is, and you can see that the, how moist that cake is, and um, it's going to be very, very tasty. Okay, so I'm going to turn this back up, 
and try a bite for you so you can see. Okay, here we go. And that is very good. Um, you can taste the apple because I did cut, the apples were just coarsely chopped. And with them being coarsely chopped, you can get a good taste of apple when you take a taste of that. And you can definitely taste the black walnuts. And um, like I say, it's just a very, very moist and delicious cake. So I hope that you'll try this recipe and let me know in the comments um, below what you thought of it. So y'all have a great day today and thank you for watching. See you next time.